everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin, and today we are going to do a playthrough of Freedom Underground Railroad by Academy Games. Now, in this game, what we're trying to do is we're trying to save as many slaves as we can. Uh, we're going to do a two-player game, so we're trying to save 10 slaves before we have either 16 slaves lost or we run out of rounds. We have a total of eight rounds to do this. The Gray Board Gamer has a great playthrough of this. Uh, I highly recommend checking his out as well. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll do a really quick setup and we're just gonna jump into the play uh, of this game because it is a bit older, but I just feel like the play of this game is quite good and the uh, subject matter is really, really, uh, I'm just impressed how they were able to uh, put this subject matter into a game and you can really feel you feel for these cubes. <laughs> these cubes are slaves, and yet, you know, all they are are cubes right now. But you can you can still feel it. You can still feel like you're trying to save them, and they did a great job doing it in this game. So let's go ahead and start setup. So the first thing you'll want to do is grab the victory condition. Uh, I don't know what you call this, token. Uh, there are two sides for each player count. One is the easy or normal, and one is hard. We're definitely going to do the normal. <laughs> I haven't played this in a while. I need to free 10 slaves. How you free them is you get them to Canada without having them being captured. Uh, I should say uh, lost, because if they're captured, you can still save them. They just go back into the plantations. Uh, if we lose 16 slaves, we lose the game. Or if we go through all eight rounds and we have not saved 10 slaves, we have lost. Now, they specifically mention this. Even if you lose, it doesn't mean that you failed at stopping slavery. Uh, <laughs> so I like how they put that in the rule book. Uh, it just means that your particular faction within the Underground Railroad maybe didn't do as well as you were hoping. There are five slave catchers that are out on the board, and there's you can see on the board it shows you where they start. Uh, you've got the different type of uh, symbols. So we've got like a circle here. We've got an oval over here. You'll just set them up in the cities accordingly. And what's important to note is when they are moving across the board, you can see that they've got their uh, tracks here. That's the only locations that they're going to move to. They're not going to move off of their specific tracks. So you're going to use that to understand, okay, they're going to move here. I need to move my slaves in this area to try and avoid these slave catchers. If ever a slave catcher ends its turn or its movement on a space with a slave, that slave is captured and has to go onto one of these slave for sale cards, which you'll see in a second. Uh, and then they will essentially be resold back into the plantations. Speaking of the plantations, we have our three plantations down here. You're going to start by filling up all of the lighter sections of these. The darker sections you'll leave blank if you're playing on normal. If you want to play a little bit harder, you can fill them up completely. I don't need to do that in this playthrough. <laughs> You'll want to grab your slave catcher dice. We'll see how those work during the playthrough. Over here we have our slave market cards. You'll want to grab only the ones for your specific player count. So I'm playing two player. There's ones, all these cards have different player count numbers on them. For example, this one has one and two. This one has one and two. This one has one, two, and three. I've grabbed all the two player ones. So I have a total of eight. And these are at the uh, beginning of each round, or I should say, I think it's the end of the round, really. We're going to have to be able to place all these slaves into these plantations. If we're not able to, any that we aren't go into the slave lost area. And if that gets filled up to 16, we lose the game. On this side of the board, you can see the three different eras that we're going to walk through. We're going to walk through 1800 to 1839. 1840 to 1859, and then 1860 to 1865. 1865 is when the Civil War ended, and that's when a lot of people say slavery, at, at least more or less, in the United States was abolished. <laughs> uh, it's not perfect. It still isn't perfect today, but it's definitely better than it was in the 1800s, of course. One of the prerequisites for us to win this game is we have to purchase all of these support tokens. Now, based on the player count, you'll set up a certain amount of support tokens per the different eras. So for a two-player game, we'll have two here for the 1800s. We'll have three here for the 1840s and then two here for the 1860s. We have to be able to purchase all of these different support tokens and save 10 slaves to win. These support tokens do nothing for us other than garnish uh, support, which is what we're trying to do. But during the game, they won't help us with anything. However, when we have purchased both of the support tokens or all of the support tokens from a specific era, that's when we'll move to the next era. So that's how you're going to see us progress through these three areas. Now down here, we have conductor tokens and we have fundraising tokens. The conductor tokens, you'll always want to place the gray token on the bottom for each era. So you're going to see I have a gray one. Those ones, whenever they're used, will immediately come back to the board. So you always have one of each of these conductor tokens in that specific era that's always there. 
all these other ones that are not grayed out, when you use them, they're discarded for the rest of the game. You're going to place an amount of these based upon the amount of players here to start the game. For two player, we have five, one, two, three, four, five conductor tokens here, three and three in this one, and two and two in 1860 to 1865. We also have fundraising tokens. Fundraising tokens, we have two for the 1800s, three for the 1840s, and two for the 1860s. The conductor tokens are gonna allow us to move slaves through our underground railroad system. We're gonna be able to sneak them around and try and get them up to Canada as quickly as possible. Fundraising is how we actually make money because in order for us to buy these conductor tokens, you can see they cost money. Everything costs money. <laughs> so if we can fundraise, uh, depending upon how much money we uh, or how many slaves are in the specific locations when we play a fundraising token, we'll gain the amount of money equal to the amount of slaves that are in this one says a southern region. Uh, the final one here says an actual northern region. So the first two, we're looking to get as many slaves as we can in the southern regions when we use these to gain a buck for each one of the slaves there. Later on, though, we're going to want them in those northern cities so we can garnish additional money that way. Next, we have our abolitionist cards for each of the different eras. Now, if you're playing with less than three to four players, you'll take out all of the cards that say three and four players. The rest of them, you'll simply shuffle up and then you're going to place opposition cards which are red cards in each of these decks so it's three four three for a two-player game then what we're going to do is we're going to start in the 1800s and we're going to fill out our row down here if let's see if it happens uh, no it's not going to happen if ever well we do have one but if ever you reveal two of these opposition cards you will set one aside keep revealing so you only have one come out a turn you could potentially have multiples come out because you have left one from another round, uh, but you should never have more than one come out from the deck unless that's all that's left in the actual pile. All of these regular abolitionist cards have no effect unless we actually purchase them, and we can purchase them during the action phase. However, the opposition cards could potentially have an effect, and this one does. It is the 1850 compromise, and it says fundraising actions bring in $2 less than they normally would. So when we add up all of our fundraising, we'll have to subtract $2. Now, this says it stays in effect until removed from the queue. And we can't, well, this one doesn't say we can't purchase it. So we could if we wanted, we could spend 3 bucks to get rid of this one so that then we didn't have this affecting us for that, for, well, it's going to affect us for a while. The reason for that is because at the end of each round, we'll discard these two cards, slide all of these down, and then replenish on whichever of the eras we're still at. So if we're still at the 1800 to 1839, we grab from here. If we move to the 1840s, we grab from this one, and the 1860s, we grab from this one. Now let's go ahead and meet our two abolitionists. Our first one, which will be our first player, which so we have our lantern token, is our conductor. What's great is on your player card or sheet itself, it actually gives you the full order of play. You're going to start with eight bucks and you all start with a roll card. Your roll card is dual sided. You will start on the number one side and you start off with you collect one dollar during the action phase. And she has an ability that we can move two slaves one space each during the action phase. And then she has one special ability she can use one time throughout the game. During your action phase, use five movements for one or more slaves. You can move one slave five spaces or split it up amongst slaves as you wish really good at moving slaves that's why i like her on the back side after she uses that ability ability she will flip this card she will still only gain one dollar during the action phase and then she can only move one slave one space during the action phase going forward so we want to make sure we use this at the right time and maybe not right away because her regular ability that she'd have available to her every round actually goes down so that's good to know so this might be a good way to push to the win you're going to see here we have an area for a reserve card. Some of those abolition cards we can buy are reserve cards. We have to place them into our reserve and then we can use them. Uh, the thing about the reserve areas, you can only ever hold one reserve card. So that's their way of preventing you from becoming too powerful. Because, of course, these people were not super powerful. They just used the networks that they had and they <laughs> used their faith to make this happen. Our second character will be the Preacher. So the Preacher here also has $8. He has gaining $1 during the action phase, and then minus one abolition card cost during the action phase, so he can buy those cards a little bit cheaper. He has the ability that at the beginning of an action phase, you can discard an abolitionist card from the queue, ignore any of the card's events that may be resolved by doing so. So we could get rid of that opposition card. 
Then when we flip over, look at this. He actually will gain $2 during the action phase and then still minus one buck for the abolitionist cards. That's why I like him. He actually gets more money after he flips, so we might want to use his ability relatively soon. So with that, I think we are ready to start the game. So the first thing we can do is the phase one, which is the slave catcher phase. We need to roll and resolve the slave catcher uh, and movement die. We'll grab our two dice, give them a roll. And we can see here the yellow slave catcher is going to move across the white uh, arrow one space. Our yellow slave catcher follows the yellow areas here. You can see this is a black arrow. This is a white arrow. So he will move one space to here. If there was any slaves in this city, he would capture them and then they'd get pushed back to those slave market cards. And in a future round, we'd have to place them into our plantations. And look at that. I mean, just think we'd be one step away from Canada if we were here and he would have captured them. So that's why you got to watch your slave catchers. Next, we'll do our planning phase. So each player may take up to a total of two conductor, fundraising and or support tokens, but we have to pay for them. Right now, the only tokens we can purchase are the conductor tokens and the fundraising tokens. Remember, we do have our support tokens, but they're $10 and we cannot pool money together. Your money is individual. Think of us as we're working across the, the United States. So I'm not able to just give my conductor money or the preacher is not able to get money from the conductor from anywhere. They each have their own money, but they're working together through this network. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with our conductor. She's going to spend four out of her five bucks. So she has a total of eight. She's going to cash this five in for a one and she's going to purchase two of these what these will do is will allow her to move three different slaves one space and we'll see how that works during the action phase so she'll go ahead and grab both of these our preacher on the other hand is just going to go ahead and buy one he's just going to buy one conductor token and i think we're going to leave it at that actually you know what he can grab two so he's going to grab one fundraising token as well fundraising tokens are free we're now going to move into the bread and butter of the game, the action phase. So starting with the lead player, a player may take any or all of the following actions in any order. You can play a conductor and or fundraising token and play a second one. You can buy and resolve one abolitionist card, gain the benefit of a player's roll card, and use the roll card's one-time special ability. Also, you can always just pass on your turn to take $3 if you're in the first period, $4 in the second period, or 5 bucks in the third period. Let's go ahead and start by using our regular special ability that we can use once per turn. Let's move two slaves one space each. Just so you know, after this phase, we're going to have to be able to place five slaves into these plantations. Any that we can't are lost. So I want to make sure I get spaces in these plantations enough to place out five slaves. But here's the kicker. Each of these locations that you see on the board can only hold one. Yeah, that's right, one slave. <laughs> the only ones that can hold more than one are these cities up here. They can hold a total of four. And every time you move a slave, if it's going to be on one of the slave catcher's routes, it's going to pull that slave catcher towards that location. So, for an example, if I had a slave here and I decided to move this slave from here to here, that's going to pull this one this way and catch this slave and that's going to pull let's see no that's the brown one this brown slave catcher over here and if there was a slave here he would catch that slave so you have to watch out where you are moving your slaves but to start off with being able to move two different slaves one space each should be relatively simple we'll start off with both of these because neither of these are going to activate any of the slave catchers and we're moving them, starting to get them out into the south. Let's go ahead and start off by using this specific conductor token. We can move three different slaves one space each. Now, that's important to note because I couldn't move one slave three spaces. It's only one or three different slaves one space each. But if I use two conductor tokens, I can move the same slave two different times with two different conductor tokens. Finally, the last item to note here is if ever I can move slaves more than one space at a time, so let's say if I can move him two spaces, he'll only activate slave catchers on that second space. And if, let's say I had a slave here, and I had a slave here that had two movement, I can jump over a location that has a slave. I don't have to worry about having this space empty in order to do that. Okay, I moved one here. Let's see, I can move three slaves, one space each. Now this is somewhat interesting. Over here, we can actually pay from South Carolina. We could pay a dollar to send this slave on a ship and bring him over here. It helps us jump him up to the north as quickly as possible. 
but money is tight. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, I'm going to move this one one space, which is going to pull this orange one up one space here. Then I'm going to take one of the slaves from over here for number two. And I think for number three, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open up this one, one here, and that's going to pull the triangle uh, slave catcher one space over here. Now, if you look down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. So we have more than enough room for those five new slaves. So that's good. I think, why the heck not? Let's go ahead and use our second one of these conductor tokens for because we can use up to two a turn. So that's going to give us three more slaves that we can move. I'm going to move this one one space here. It's on the purple track. So I'm going to move this slave catcher one space up here. Now, I'd love to move this guy to here, but then he's going to get captured. So that's not a good idea. But I just opened this spot. So I'll move a slave here for number two. And then I think for number three, I'm going to move this slave to this location. And that's going to pull this slave catcher another space over here. We were able to move one slave into St. Louis. You can see St. Louis has the $2 icon there. That means we just gained two bucks. Part of the reason why I wanted to do that. So our conductor only had $4. Now she's back up to six. She then can still purchase one abolitionist card, and I think we're going to grab this Southern Church Correspondence. It costs $1, but what we get when we buy it, we immediately discard it. You can see it's different than this one, which says play from your reserve. This one, we just get the benefit and we discard the card. Each player receives $2 from the bank. So I'm just going to give her that dollar back and another one. So that means she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bucks. And our preacher, who has seven already, will get two more for a total of nine bucks. And then what we do is simply discard this card. I'm realizing I totally forgot about our plus one dollar during the action phase. So we're going to give our conductor another dollar, which means she has nine bucks, which is amazing. Our preacher here will go next. He actually only has eight, but he'll gain one from this to give us nine. I'm really tempted to use this for so we can use our fundraising token and get the full benefit of it. Uh, because if we use this, it says at the beginning of your action phase, discard an abolition card from the queue. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do it because that means going forward, we're going to be able to gain two bucks during the action phase. Let's do it. It's pretty obvious which one we're going to get rid of. We're going to get rid of this 1850 compromise. The only bad thing is, is the next round we're going to be gaining, uh, receiving one, two, three at least. We're probably going to buy one of these. So four new cards, likely another opposition card is going to come out. We we'll use our first conductor token here so we can move three slaves, one space each. So I want to get as many as I can in the green spaces. So I'm going to move one here, which is going to pull this yellow triangle. Oh, he's going to be a problem. Uh, then I will do number two. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do this one to here. And then number three, I'll do to here, which will pull this uh, square one space t uh, forward. Yeah, he's getting close. He's going to come into Virginia next and then come down to Georgia. Then for my second token, I'm going to go ahead and use the fundraising token, which we now can gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight bucks <laughs> yeah that is amazing you know what that means we're going to be able to buy a support token next round uh, which is kind of what i was hoping for so eight bucks plus our what do we have five six seven eight nine yeah that's what 17 bucks i'll take that remember we can buy abolitionist cards at a minus one cost that's our other special ability so we're going to spend one buck to get levi coffin during any player's action phase, ignore the movement of one slave catcher if they would capture a slave, then discard this card. We can play this from our reserve, so I'll pop this into our reserve. We finished our first action phase. Let's go to the slave market phase. Deliver slaves from the bottom slave market card to the plantations. I'm going to grab this slave card and put these five slaves out, and then I'm going to push all of these down, and we will flip this one and populate it. Now, just so you know, if any one of these slave catchers captures a slave, you're going to place the slaves on these cards and you'll have to put them back out onto plantations. How you do that is you evenly spread them out between the cards as much as possible. So you'd start here, you place one here, then one here, then one here, and then keep that going. So now is where you have to determine which of the plantations you want to put these slaves. I know that I did a lot of movement on this side and I pulled some of our slave catchers this way. So I want to definitely put a couple on this side and then I think a couple over here. Uh, so that way I can kind of use my slaves to push the slave catchers back and forth. 
The only thing that's really unpredictable in this game is the uh, the dice roll, and sometimes that can be brutal. <laughs> Finally, we have our lantern phase. We're going to move the first player over to the preacher, and it says discard a card if it's in the rightmost space in the abolitionist queue, but since we're playing with two players, it's going to be two of them. This may trigger an opposition card. Check for victory conditions. If the game continues, refill the abolitionist queue and then pass the lantern token over to the preacher. And then we'll go back to the slave catcher's phase. We've got one card here that we will discard. We'll slide this one down, and then we'll refill these back up. Another good one. We've got Liberty Hill, Theodore Weld. We've got St. Catharines, Ontario. Oh, look at that. All good. And John Greenleaf Whittier. Oh, and I like St. Catharines, Ontario. Move one slave from a large northern city directly to Canada. <laughs> Or how about this one? Move one slave from any plantation to a southern space with no effect. So you can move them to a southern space and not move a slave catcher because Theodore Weld helped them move. Oh, these are so awesome. This one exchanged the position of two uh, cards in the abolitionist queue. That'd be great if we had an opposition here or we had one that we really wanted. Uh, of course, this one costs three bucks, so I'll probably wait to buy that one. These two are at risk of being lost for the next round. Speaking of the slave catcher phase, let's go ahead and roll our slave catcher dice. We've got the orange one is going to move one space to the west. That's great. He's totally getting a tip that's not going to help him. You can see the white is here, so he's going to move one space all the way up to Chicago. He thinks one of the slaves are up here. <laughs> They're not. We'll then move to that planning phase. We'll start with the preacher. He's going to purchase the first support token. Costs him 10 bucks. He's going to buy this. Doesn't do anything for him other than it's going to help us win the game. <laughs> We're garnishing that support. We're telling people, hey, slaves, stupid idea. Come on, listen to us. And they're starting to, which is great. Then he's going to spend two bucks to go ahead and buy another conductor token. And then we're going to have our conductor, let's see, I think for sure we're going to have her grab a fundraiser so she can get some money. And then she's going to go ahead and spend two bucks to get this gray one. Remember, when she uses this gray token, it's actually going to come back here and we can repurchase it again and again and again. It's the only one that we can do that with. Our preacher is our first player this round, so he will go first. He will be able to move three slaves, one space each. He's going to start with this one. He's going to move this slave all the way up here and pay a buck to do it. That means he only has $3 left. Oh, but he gains $2 because of the action phase. I always forget that. So he still has $5 left, thank goodness. <laughs> he then can move a slave into Charlatan and it has no slave catcher effect, thank goodness. And you can see the boat has no effect either. None of the slave catchers can go onto the boats. And then for his third movement, he's going to move this slave into Washington, D.C. Now, normally, that would mean this slave catcher would catch that slave, and the slave is going to move one space over. But we have Lee Coffin. During any player's action phase, ignore the movement of one slave catcher. If they would capture a slave, then discard this. So this slave catcher will not move. This one will still move because it's not going to catch him. Uh, but we gain two bucks because of that. I really need money. <laughs> so we've got two more bucks for our preacher. That means he has a total of $7. Now, I wish I had another token to use, but I don't, so I think I'm going to buy an abolitionist card. Remember that our other ability allows us to buy any of these cards at a minus one cost, so let's grab Theodore Weld. We can move any slave from any plantation to a southern space with no effect. We'll grab one of these slaves and put them here, and that would not affect this orange slave catcher, even though it normally would, because we used that special card. So now we're going to go over to our conductor. Our conductor first will gain one buck, uh, and then she's going to use her regular special ability that allows her to move two slaves, one space each. She's going to move this slave from charlatan to here. That's going to pull this orange slave catcher to here. And then she's going to move a new slave out into this spot. Now that means she's got all of the southern areas completely filled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beautiful bucks. That means we're going to use our fundraising token for our first token and gain nine bucks. So I'm going to grab a 10 and give one back. That means we can grab the other support token uh, during the next planning phase. Our second token this turn will be a conductor token. We're going to use this one, which will go back onto the board. We can move sl three slaves, one space each. We're going to move this slave over here that's way up here all the way to Boston. And that's going to push this slave catcher up to New York. That's going to give us a little bit of space over here. Because remember, this location, it's a larger city. It can hold more than one slave, four to be exact. And Boston gets us two glorious bucks. 
Thank you very much. Then we're going to move this slave here, and that's going to gain us another dollar. So we'll grab a buck here. They're moving into Iowa. That's going to pull both the blue slave catcher and the purple slave catcher one space over. And that means our third movement, we can move this slave into uh, Washington, D.C., grab another two bucks because of that. Thank you very much. And that's going to pull this purple slave catcher one space here and the uh, brown slave catcher one space here. Then I think we're going to grab this Lane Theological Seminary. We're going to spend one buck for this. We can either immediately move two different slaves one space each, or we can purchase a token at a $2 discount. And I've got that support token that I could buy and it would only be eight bucks instead of 10. And I think I'm going to do that. This will mean that when we refill the row, we're going to be able to refill the row with 1840 cards next time because this means we have immediately moved to 1840. <laughs> nice. We're going to get two bucks back because normally that costs 10, but only costs eight for this time. Yeah. And that's going to end our action phase. That means we'll move to the slave market phase. And just so you know, our preacher has seven bucks and our conductor has 12. We're going to move both of these down. We're going to flip over our next card. Ooh, this one has seven slaves. I think I'm going to place three over here and we'll place two over here. We'll move to the lantern phase. We'll simply just move these cards down and we'll replenish with both of these. Oh, purchase a token at a $3 discount. Oh no, the New Jersey abolishes slavery. Slaves may not be moved into or out of Northern blue cities using conductor tokens in effect until removed from the queue. So we can either buy this or just let it go. Some of them will say we can't buy them. Now, I just want to show you, we have our three support tokens we need from here in order to move to the 1860s. We have three of each of these. These say we can move four slaves one space or two slaves two spaces. And remember, if we can move them two spaces, they only move slave catchers on that second space. We still have three or we only have three fundraising tokens. I think in this one we only had two. So we have two, three, two. We'll finish off the lantern phase by having our conductor go first. Let's move to the slave catcher phase. This is where it gets a little risky. I just want to show you guys the different sides of these dice. You can see here, look, they can move three that way, three east, three west. Uh, there's also, here it is, that symbol. That means none of the slave catchers will move. Let's hope we get that. Because <laughs> right now, a lot of those slave catchers could catch some slaves. Uh, we've got the blue one moving two to the uh, east. Once again, this is actually pretty fortuitous. We can pull them over here, and that means that we've got some space on this side that we can uh, put some slaves to pull them back to this side. I like it. We'll move to our planning phase, and the conductor is going to go ahead and spend three bucks to buy the four for one, and I think she's going to grab a fundraising token. Our preacher has seven bucks, but I think he's going to use all six to buy one of these and one of these. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to get two bucks during the action phase. Yeah, so maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> so I'm going to do it now before I forget. Moving into the action phase, we'll have the conductor gain $1 and the preacher is going to gain $2. Our conductor is going to start using her special ability. She can move two slaves one space each. Now, right now we have that opposition of not being able to move with conductor tokens outside of northern cities. <laughs> this is not a conductor token. We're using her special ability to move here. That's going to push this blue uh, catcher one more space over here, and she'll gain one buck for that. Her second free move, she's going to move this one one space up to here. That's going to push that blue slave catcher one space over here, and she's going to gain another buck. I love all this money. Need all this money. We have a total of six slaves for sale, so we need to have six slave spots at the end of this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. We actually have enough for now. Oh, that actually makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I think we're going to start this time with Liberty Hill. We're going to spend one buck. We get to do an and here. Move two slaves, one space, and purchase a token at full cost. We're going to spend, oh man, three bucks. Yeah, it's a lot, but I think it's worth it. We're going to spend three bucks to get a two for two. Uh, so we've got that in our reserve as well. And we're going to be able to move two slaves, one space each. I think the first slave I want to move is this one. We're going to move one space up. We're going to get one buck for that. And then I have to move the yellow slave catcher. The yellow slave catcher will move one space up to here. 
We're then going to move this slave one space up to my hometown area in Minnesota. Woohoo! <laughs> and move this slave catcher one space up and also generate a buck for that. Okay, we have not played any tokens yet, so we can play up to two tokens. Let's go ahead and show you a two for two. So we can move two slaves two spaces each. So I'll grab one from here. I'm going to go one, two. That's going to generate us two dollars. It's also going to push this slave catcher one space over to here. That's okay. I want her to go that way because then we can move a slave one, two and generate another dollar. You can see how you're going to make your money. You're going to make your money by moving slaves around into the right locations. It's going to push, push the yellow slave uh, catcher that space over there. That's going to free up some area over here. Now you notice when I moved that one space, I didn't generate a dollar for moving through this location. You only generate the dollar and you only move the slave catchers on the final space that you move to move to. Our second token, we're going to use the fundraiser. We're going to gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bucks. <laughs> I don't even know how much money we have at this point. I'll have to look. Our conductor has a total of 20 bucks, you guys. That is amazing. We're going to move to our preacher now, and we definitely do not like this card. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is purchase this card. It says exchange the position of two cards in the abolitionist queue. Now it has to be actual cards, not blank cards. So I couldn't switch this with this one, but I can switch these two. The advantage of that is this one will get discarded uh, at the end of this round. And this one has been used, so we'll discard it. Our preacher is pretty poor. He only has two bucks right now. So he's going to use this one, the four movement for one. Let's see if we can make ourselves some money, huh? So the first thing we're going to do is move this one, one space to here. That will generate one dollar and push the blue slave catcher to here. That frees up this space for us to move this one to here. Push this slave catcher, but that's going to give us two more bucks. So we're going to go up to five dollars. We'll then move this slave to Ripley pushing this slave catcher one over and that's going to generate us another dollar and we can move one more let's go ahead and grab from washington dc we'll move here that will push this slave catcher to here but that will generate us one more dollar and then i think for our second token let's go ahead and do the two for two so move two slaves two spaces each we're definitely going to grab one slave from this plantation get ourselves all the way over here to kentucky that's going to pull this one back to here. And then let's go ahead and move this slave one, two. It's going to push him back to this spot and that will generate the preacher another dollar. <laughs> he made bank that round. Our preacher now has a total of eight bucks. I'll take that. But now we have to place these six uh, slaves out onto the board. I always hate that part. And we're going to flip this. Oh, another seven. Jeez. From there, let's go ahead and seed these slaves into the plantations. I think I'm going to place two more here. We're going to fill up this plantation and two more here and two more here. Oof. I'm going to have to get a lot of movement next round. We'll move into that lantern phase. We'll discard this card, move these two all the way down. We'll refill one, two. Come on, be another good one. Yes. No opposition. Hopefully that will mean this is a good round. We'll have our preacher become the first player. Let's go ahead and roll our slave catcher dice. We'll pick them up. Let's see what we get. We'll roll them. Okay, so we've got the purple one moving two spaces to the west. Ah, we have our first slave that's been caught. It's going to move two spaces to here and capture this slave that was in St. Louis. That slave will now be placed here, and we're going to have to be able to place six slaves now instead of only five at the end of this turn. We'll move to that planning phase and our preacher will go ahead and spend three bucks to buy one of these and get a fundraising token. And then our uh, conductor is gonna spend 10 to get one of these support tokens and then spend three to get one of the two by twoers. Well, this is where it starts getting interesting. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use my four by one. So move four slaves, one space each. I could put that right back onto our board and we can buy that again. It's just going to be the question of which ones do we want to move? <laughs> Currently, we only have two open spots in here. We need to have a total of six so I don't lose any slaves. And yes, I'm going to try and not lose any if I can. <laughs> our first movement will be with this slave so we can move him up one space. We're going to generate one, or is it one or two? One buck for that. And we're going to move this slave up over here. Where is this? To Cleveland. 
That means we can pull a slave out to here and push him right back. And then number three, we can do one to here. And I think it's time to save our first slave. Our final movement, we're going to have this one escape to Canada. One down, nine to go. We can place our slaves that we have saved up here to track. One down, we just need to get to here to win the game and get those support tokens. Now I think we're going to go ahead and purchase the Lincoln-Douglas debates. This allows us to purchase a token at a $3 discount. Normally it costs one, but our ability makes that cost zero. We're going to buy the token we just used so that we can use that a second time. So I'm just going to, for my second token, use this one and put it back onto the board. For our first slave movement, we'll move this one up here to Minnesota. We'll generate one coin and we will move this up one space over to here to Chicago. That allows us to go a movement here for number two. That's going to push him back here and pull him to here. We're then going to spend a buck to send this guy on the ship over here. So we're going to go back down to only six bucks. And then our fourth movement, we're going to move one of these out to here to Charlatan. Next, we're going to move to our conductor. Our conductor gets her two free movement. She's going to move this slave over here to New York. That's going to generate her three beautiful dollars. And that's going to pull him to over here. Where is he at? That's uh, Philadelphia. Then let's go ahead and sneak this slave over to here and pull our purple slave catcher over. But that will generate us another buck. Then I think let's start with... Yeah, let's start with this one. Four, uh, four, we can move one space. And the first one I think we're going to do is this one. We're going to save him. So that's our second sa slave saved. That was movement one. Movement two, we're going to save the one way up here in Maine. You can see this one. That'll be our third one. We're then going to move this slave over to here, pulling this one one space over. That will give us one buck. And then our fourth one, I think we're going to do this one, pushing them up to Maine. That's going to generate another buck, which is great. And that's going to push the yellow slave catcher up to here. Okay, the money's coming in, but we're starting to run out of conductor tokens. <laughs> I'm going to use this one for our second one. Two slaves, move them two spaces each. That's a gray one, so we can put that back on the board. First one, we're going to move this one two spaces to here. Pull the purple slave catcher one space to here. Here we go. I think this might be better. We can move one, two. That's only going to activate the purple slave catcher. And we will still get one buck instead of two. Not quite as good, but I'll take that. Then we can buy one abolitionist card. I'm going to buy St. Catharines, Ontario. Cost us one buck. Move one slave from a large northern city directly to Canada. We're going to go ahead and save this slave, popping him right here. He was able to jump right to Canada. No worries about any of these uh, slaves moving, slave catchers. And that's going to end our activation this turn, unless I want to use my ability right now. Do I want to do more movement? You know what? I'm going to wait till next round when I think we're going to have a hard time with movement. So yeah, I'm going to end, I'm going to end this round. We have exactly six spaces. <laughs> so we're going to fill that plantation up and we're going to move these down another seven no choices here on where to place our slaves this completely fills all three of our plantations for the next round i need at a minimum seven open spaces if i don't want to lose any slaves we'll move to that lantern phase we'll slide these down and we'll draw two more that's a good one the principles of the 98 and the Ken kansas nebraska act beautiful still no opposition cards let's start our next round we're going to move our first player token over to our conductor We'll start with our slave catcher phase. We'll roll and the purple one is moving two spaces to the left. Really? How did you hear about this slave? Two spaces all the way over here to Missouri, capturing this slave. We now have to be able to place eight slaves, <laughs> eight slaves from our market card at the end of this round. Brutal. Our preacher is going to buy two tokens during the planning phase, the four for one and the three for one over here. That's for a total of five, three plus two. He has one buck left. Yeah. Our conductor is going to spend 10, five plus the five here to get our second support token. We only need one more before we can go to the 1860s to 1865. And then she's going to cash out all of her money. Uh, so she'll have none left to grab this token for her other token. We're then going to have the preacher gain two bucks, so he'll have three in total, and our conductor will gain one for the action phase. And we're going to start with the preacher. 
we're in some dire need for some money. So the first thing during our action phase, we're going to buy this Vigilance Committees. Remember, we have a minus one for the cost, so this costs a zero. Each player receives $3 from the bank. Yes. So we're going to give 3 bucks to each of us. We're then going to use our first token, and we'll use the four for one, and that will go back onto the board because it's a gray one. So our first one we're going to move out is here. That's going to pull this slave catcher to here. Oh, man, you guys, this is going to get rough. We're then going to move this slave catcher up here to Newport in Indiana or Illinois. Uh, I think that's actually in Illinois, but close to the edge, gaining us a buck, and that's going to pull this purple slave catcher. We're then going to move this slave up here, all the way up to here to the uh, to Minnesota for another buck. That's number three, and that's going to push the orange slave catcher to Chicago. That means we can push this one from uh, Charleston and push this one back for our fourth one. <laughs> we snuck them in. Then I think we're going to have to do it. It's not great, but it's going to give us enough money so that we're going to be able to buy that third support token next round. We're going to use our fundraiser. We're going to generate one, two, three, four, five bucks because it's all of the green locations. Uh, that's gone forever. That's five bucks. That means we have more than enough to be able to buy that support token next round. That's all we're going to do. <sighs> okay, now we're going to go to the conductor. Our conductor is going to use her regular ability to be able to move two slaves one space each. Now, I know this is going to look kind of weird, but I'm doing this to try and help our other slaves. I'm actually going to move this one back to New York. First, that's going to get us three bucks for that. We're garnishing some more support. That's going to pull this slave catcher here and this slave catcher here. Our second slave movement is simply going to be moving someone to Charleston over here. So we have two open slots. We need eight. I think it's time to use our two for two. So we can move two slaves, two spaces, and we can put this back on the board for purchase. That'll allow this slave to move two spaces here, sneak by this purple slave catcher, and we're going to generate one buck. So that's our first one. And then our second one, we can move this slave one, two spaces. That's going to pull our yellow slave catcher to here. Uh, but we got another space open. That's three. Yeah, and you know, we don't have any more tokens. I think we're going to spend two bucks on the Oberlin, Ohio to be able to move four more slaves one space. I could buy one for no, uh, no cost, essentially. I could get the same token and use it again. So I guess it doesn't really matter. We can move a slave here with no problem. That's not going to move any slave catchers, and we've just opened another spot. I think we'll go ahead and pay a buck to send this one on our ship for number two. We'll move this one out for number three, and we can move one more slave. Let's go ahead and save this one for Minnesota. So that will be at number five. We are halfway to the saving point for our slaves, and we only need three more of the support tokens. I haven't played this game enough to know if this is the right time, but I'm going to do it anyways. During your action phase, use five movement points for one or more slaves. I can split it up however I want. They only activate on the spot that they end. We're going to flip this over, but now we're only going to be able to move one slave uh, during our action phase instead of two. Let's start with this slave and have him move one space to here. He's going to move to Boston. That will generate two bucks for our conductor, and it's going to push this uh, slave catcher one space over. That means we can move this slave to Washington, D.C. That's going to give us two more bucks. That's our second movement, so we still have three. It's going to push this one here and this one here. We'll do our third slave movement, saving this one from Maine. That's our sixth one. We're over halfway there, you guys. Let's go ahead and have this one from Newport move two spaces over here to Minnesota. We will then grab one buck for that and move the orange slave catcher here. Unfortunately, I definitely do not have enough space for all of our slaves, <laughs> but you, you do what you can. We'll end that action phase. I have a total of three, four, five open spots. That unfortunately means out of our eight, we're going to have three that are lost. We lose the game if ever we have lost 16 or more slaves. That'll end this round. We'll push these down. This will be our last card here. We only have three rounds left, you guys. I'm getting close, but I'm, yeah, my plantations are full again. And uh, I'm pretty sure an opposition card is going to show up, considering <laughs> we haven't had any show up from 1840 to 1859. And there's four in there. And of course, I've used both of our special abilities too, so it's a little bit nerve-wracking. Uh, okay, we got another good one. 
Henry Box Brown. We've got John Parker Hale. And oh my gosh, still no opposition cards. That is amazing. We've moved our lantern token over to our conductor. Let's go ahead and roll our slave catcher dice. Come on, slave dice, be nice. The blue slave catcher will simply move one space towards, it looks like, New York. Nice, no one is there, thank goodness. Moving into the purchasing tokens step, we're going to go ahead and spend three from our conductor. She has a total of 10 money. She's going to grab the four for one. Nah, two for two. <laughs> I don't know if it really matters. Uh, she's going to grab that one, and she's going to grab the fundraiser token. And then we're going to have the preacher with his 10, five plus this five, to go ahead and buy the second Yes, the second support token. That means we're now in the 1860s to 1865. That means we can buy any of those tokens immediately. Unfortunately, we don't have enough money. We only have three, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy this one. We'll start off with a conductor for the action phase. First thing she's going to do is move this slave one space here. Push this uh, slave catcher one space to here. Remember, that's now her ability. She can only move one instead of two because she used her big main ability kind of a bummer. <laughs> uh, so I think our first token we're going to use, you know what, hold that thought. It's not exactly cheap, but we're going to buy Uncle Tom's Cabin. It's going to cost three. Purchase a token at a $3 discount and swap the places of two cards in the abolitionist queue. So I'm going to go ahead and spend these three. I am going to swap. I want, yeah, I definitely think I want to have the preacher be able to buy this for free. So I I'm going to go ahead and just swap these two. Nice. And then I'm going to spend this one buck to be able to buy one of the 1860 to 1865 tokens because I'm now in that era. We're going to go ahead and buy the five for one. Let's then go ahead and use our five for one token. We're going to start with a slave moving out here for one. We're going to save this slave up here in Minnesota. They're going to come over here. That's our seventh one. We're then going to move this one up for our third one. That's going to gain us a buck, thank goodness. And we're going to push the orange one over to here. We're then going to move this slave over here to Detroit. Detroit's going to gain us two bucks. Thank you very much. And that's going to push this slave catcher to here. We've got one more that we can do. I think what we'll do is move this one on the boat all the way over here to Boston, pushing this slave catcher over and generating two more dollars for us. So that's our five for one. Then our second token, let's go ahead and do a two for two. And we'll put that back on the board because that's gray. I'm thinking this one over here for two movements, we're going to move here. That's going to generate one buck for us, thanks to those wonderful Iowans. <laughs> we're going to move this one over and this one over by one space. We'll then take one from our plantations here, move two spaces to here, pulling this one over. And I think that's it, right? It was two for two. So that's our two that we can do. Now let's go ahead and move to our preacher. Our preacher is poor as can be, but he can pay for this one for a cost of zero. So Henry Box Brown, we can move one slave from any plantation to a large northern city with no effect. Let's grab from this one and drop them into Chicago. Now it says no effect, so that means we don't generate the two bucks, but it also means we don't move this slave catcher. Okay, now we can use our two tokens. Our first one we have, we'll use the three for one. And at this point, I think I'm going to save our final three slaves. One, two, and three. All three of these are saved. That's our 10 slaves that we need. We now just need 20 bucks, you guys, and to uh, survive long enough to win the game. <laughs> Okay, then our second one we're going to use is our four for one. We'll place that back on the board. We can move four slaves, one space each. We have an open spot here, so that's no question. I think I'm gonna move this one all the way up to Minnesota for our second one. That will give us $1. Yes, we only have one buck. We are so, we do not have enough money. <laughs> our third slave, we'll go ahead and move this one here for another dollar. So that's gonna give our preacher two bucks. That is gonna push our blue slave catcher one space. And for our final slave movement, we're gonna move out of Kentucky over here to Newport, generate another buck and push over this purple slave catcher but we definitely did not open up enough space in our plantations. As you can see here, we have one, two, three, four open slots. We have seven slaves we need to place. So once again, we're gonna have three slaves that are lost. 
yeah, I'm much better at this game when I play with other people. So sorry that uh, <laughs> I'm not showing you the best strategy. It's also hard when you're on camera. You get all nervous. We've saved 10 slaves at the cost of 6 slaves. I don't know if I really like those percentages. We also only have two rounds left. We're going to slide these down. And now let's go ahead and move to the lantern phase. We're going to discard this card, move these down, and we get to draw from here. Uh, ooh, Southern Secession. We've got Frederick Douglass. Oh, that's going to help us with money. And we have another green one. We have William Still. Move two slaves from a single large northern city directly to Canada. Well, it's not really what I need. What I need is money. <laughs> We're going to move our lantern token back over to the preacher and we'll move to the slave catcher phase. We'll give our slave catcher dice a roll. We're going to move the blue one three spaces to the right. Well, he's going to move through New York all the way over to here and that's as far as he goes. So he's going to capture this slave. That means we're going to have eight slaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that need to go into the plantations this round. Jeez. Moving into the token purchasing step, our preacher only has three bucks. Oh, it's not good. It's not good at all. He's going to grab the four for one for three bucks, and then he'll grab this one. Uh, this one, though, we only get money based on having the slaves in the northern cities. I don't have a lot of slaves in the northern cities, but it's free. I'm going to at least get it. Conversely, our conductor has nine bucks, so she's going to go ahead and spend eight of them to get the five for one and the three for two. We'll see if that was a good idea or not. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go to the preacher's, uh, the preacher's action phase. I think we're going to start off with this conductor token of four for one. Uh, that will go back onto the board. I think the first thing we're going to do is move this one from Washington, D.C. over to this spot. That's going to push this blue slave catcher here, and we're going to generate ourselves a much-needed dollar. Well, I'm sure you guys see better options, but I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so I'm going to go here for action two out of our four. He is then going to be captured by this slave catcher going on to the next uh, slave card, this one over here. Uh, so that's number two, but that allows us then to move this one here for three, and that's going to push this guy over to here as well. That's going to generate us a dollar. Thank goodness we've got two. Then we can move this one to here, pulling this one over one space for another buck. And that one more will be over here for four, and that will push him back over here. Then I think I'm going to go ahead and spend one buck to buy Frederick Douglass so we can each gain four bucks. So he spent one for four. I will take that. Moving to the conductor's turn, I can move one slave one space. I'll move this one one space, moving this purple one one space here, and that will generate one buck for me. We're then going to use one dollar to buy John Parker Hale. Gain one dollar for each slave in spaces connected to Washington, D.C. We have a slave in one, two, three, four locations. That is amazing. That is four more bucks. We have a total of nine, you guys. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to generate us our money. So we actually will have 10 because we gain one and our preacher will gain two more bucks. So he has a total of $8. So now I think I'm going to use for my first token, the five for one. I can place that back on the board. I'm going to go ahead and move one here for uh, one movement. I'm going to move another one here. That's going to pull him one space over here. So that's two. I have three more. I'm going to move one here for two more beautiful bucks. That's going to give me a total of 12. Unfortunately, though, this one is going to capture this slave, and that's going to go onto our first card, and this one's going to get moved here. But that's going to allow us to move one slave to here, pushing him back to this space, generating two more dollars. And then we have one more movement. We can move a slave here. Oh, we only have three open slots. Boy, not doing great. I still have a move three slaves, two spaces, but I've got to do this because the next round is the last round and I need to have enough money. <laughs> so I am going to fundraise and this is an older one. So this one's still on the uh, south side. So I'm going to generate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bucks. That's why I did that. It's kind of amazing. Unfortunately, though, that means when we look at our slave card here, we're going to be able to place three of our slaves here and the rest are lost. I am certainly not doing great. 
sorry you guys, please don't take this as a strategy guide. <laughs> we cannot lose uh, four slaves next round. That means we need to be able to place one, two, three, four of these at least out into the plantations to win the game. Because even if I buy those two support tokens, you have to get all the way to the end of the round. During the lantern phase is when you find out if you win or lose. Speaking of the lantern phase, we're going to do that right now. Discard this one, move these two up. We will refresh. Oh, we have U.S. Marshals. All slave catchers immediately return to their starting cities. Uh, triggered when removed cannot be purchased. Okay, so this doesn't happen now, but when this gets removed, that's when that happens. Which actually, that's not bad because we are going to uh, lose or <laughs> end the game before that's going to matter. We're going to move our first player token over to our conductor, and our conductor is going to do something ridiculous. She has 22 bucks. She's going to spend 20 bucks to buy both of these, but that means she's getting no new conductor tokens. That does mean that we can win the game as long as we don't lose. She does still have the move three uh, slaves, two spaces each at least. Our preacher has eight bucks. He's going to use seven to get a five for one and a four for one. And then I'm going to remember gaining our money. So he's going to gain two bucks during the action phase and one buck for our conductor. So our conductor has three and he has three. Let's see if we can survive. Oh my goodness, you guys, I forgot to roll my slave dice. Let's give him a roll. Okay, we've got the orange one moving one space to the right. And when I said right, I mean left. <laughs> Sorry about that. Going over to Chicago. Moving to that action phase, we're going to start with the conductor. She is going to move this slave in Boston one space forward here. That's going to trigger this slave, catch her to move one space. And we're going to generate one buck. That means we have a total of four bucks. Then we're going to go ahead and use our move three different slaves, two spaces each. We're going to pay one of those bucks to be able to move this slave in Charleston, two spaces, one here and one to Boston, pushing this slave up and we're going to generate two bucks. That's our first slave movement of two spaces. Then we're going to go ahead and spend another buck and we're going to get one out of the plantations, moving two spaces all the way over here to the boat. In our third one, we're going to move this slave two spaces right over here, generating for us another buck and moving the blue slave catcher back over here one space. Then I think it's time to buy a card. Who doesn't want to buy Abraham Lincoln? Come on. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln will allow us to move three slaves, uh, one space each, and then we can buy one token that costs three, or I guess for a three cost discount. So we're going to buy this one that's a two for two for a three cost discount, so it's free. Abraham is going to allow us to move one slave here and one slave here. Our third slave movement, because of Abraham, will move over here, generate another dollar, and we're going to have to move the yellow slave catcher. We'll move this slave one space over here. So that was Abraham. Thank you, Abraham. We now can use one more token, so we're going to use our two for two and put this back onto the board. Our first two for two is going to be this slave moving two spaces here. That's going to push this slave catcher here, and then this slave catcher over here. Now this means we have four open spaces, which is great. But let's see if we can maybe eke out another one or two that we can save. I want to. <laughs> we're then going to spend another buck here, and we're going to move this one in Charleston, one, two in Boston, generate two more bucks, move that slave catcher over. But that means we'll have another space that we can save a slave. So now we're going to go over to our preacher, our preacher is going to use his four for one, so four slaves moving one space each first, and that will go back onto the board. We're going to move one slave from here to Charleston. We're then going to go ahead and save this slave here in Cleveland. I don't think we have a problem if we slave, uh, save too many slaves. <laughs> our third one will be saving this one in Maine. And then our fourth one, we're going to go ahead and move this one. No, we don't want to do that one. I was thinking of a different one. I think instead we'll do our final movement here from Boston over to here, pushing this slave catcher to here, and we'll generate one buck. Okay, we have one more token that we can use. Let's go ahead and use our five for one we have here to see if we can eke out a couple more slaves to save. With five total movement, let's move this one here for one, generating two more dollars. 
we'll be able to move the purple slave catcher here and the brown one here. That's then going to allow us to move this one for two, and that will push this one back, and we'll generate two more bucks. Uh, we don't really need money at this point. We're just trying to save people. Let's go ahead and move this slave out onto the boat as well, spending one gold or one buck for that. We can then move one out to Charleston. That's four, and I have one more movement. We're going to go ahead and save the one here in Minnesota, and that will be our 13th slave saved. That'll end our action phase. We have our slaves that we need to place out onto the plantations. We have one, two, three, four, five, plus one over here. So we only lost one slave. Well, that's somewhat fitting. We saved 13 and we lost 13 slaves. So there you have it. That was Freedom, the Underground Railroad. Boy, what a game. It's, uh, I think it's beautifully designed. It's very much a challenge. Uh, I find that every time I play it, uh, I want to save every single slave, and I think that that's uh, kudos to the designer to make you feel that way, but also you want to win, <laughs> uh, and so you want to uh, save the slaves that you need to and make enough money. I think they do a great job with this game. I am never getting rid of this one, uh, but I probably won't pull it out that often. I also really don't recommend it solo. I think it's best with two to three players because it's nice to bounce ideas off, especially with this board and just all the different options that can happen. Uh, I've had always the best experience with two to three players. Full disclosure, my wife helped me with the last round because my brain was turning into mush and she helped me be able to save enough slaves so we could win the game. So I'm just saying it's helpful to have that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and we will see you at the next stop.